Live from Case at 12, the 6 o'clock news starts right now. Around the state, the Delta variant causing a resurgence of COVID-19 cases, and that includes in Guadalupe County, where less than half of the community is fully vaccinated. The latest state numbers show 48.8% of residents 12 and up are fully vaccinated, and 56.1% have had at least one shot. But our Garrett Berger talked with two vaccine providers who were seeing evidence that those numbers may begin to creep up. Like its neighbor Bear County, Guadalupe County has been seeing a rise in COVID cases, but its emergency management coordinator hasn't noticed much of an increase in its vaccination rate. Or since about June, the beginning of June, we have not seen our percentages increase as much as we'd like to. But once again, pediatrician we talked to thinks vaccination numbers are about to go up. I think to date we have immunized probably about somewhere between 40 and 60 people, but we've got almost that many on the schedule now, just starting between this week and next week when we'll be doing it. Dr. Robert Stevens says he began warning patients of a coming spike two to three weeks ago. Now it's here and so are the vaccination requests. I think people are very frightened uh, and rightfully so about the Delta variant because it's really been kind of scary to watch. And then that is coupled with the fact that school's gonna be starting in two weeks. At Seguin Pharmacy, the owner says the number of people coming in for vaccinations had dried up. Those visits have started to come up again to maybe five people a day. People getting more conscious about danger, the threat, of the COVID, people getting uh, more informed about uh, the new variant in general. The county plans to hold several vaccination clinics next week, too. Though the emergency management coordinator's pitch is much less insistent than that of officials in Bear County. Unlike some of our surrounding communities, you know, we're not trying to push that on to people. We want to make sure that the individual themselves or their families that want the vaccine, they can they have that right. In Seguin, I'm Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. The new COVID hospitalizations here in Bear County and San Antonio following the trend that we're seeing around the country in the state. Hospitalizations now at 920 people up 695 from last Thursday. 260 people are in the ICU, 132 are on ventilators, no new deaths to report. We're expecting to speak with Mayor Ron Nuremberg about those new numbers and what's being done at the city level to help turn back the tide of new cases and hospitalizations. That's coming up later in this hour. The Delta variant fueling a surge in COVID-19 cases, also bringing on a disturbing rise in pregnant women being hospitalized. Three of the city's major hospital systems, University, Baptist, and the Children's Hospital of San Antonio, reporting most of those expected moms were not vaccinated. A spokeswoman says the Children's Hospital has only seen minor symptoms so far, but in Baptist Health System, it's a different story. Some expected moms have needed supplemental oxygen, intubation in the ICU. Some even had to deliver their babies prematurely. And the data is very clear from over 100,000 women who are pregnant who have received the vaccine that the vaccine is very efficacious and has no obvious concerns for the fetus. So I would get the vaccine without hesitancy and I recommend that for all my patients. Dr. Ramsey says chances of a baby being born with COVID are low, but being vaccinated also helps the mother produce antibodies that could protect their baby for the first few months of life. A short day for jurors in the punishment phase for Otis McCain. Lawyers were left arguing about upcoming testimony dealing with victim impact statements. Our Erica Hernandez has details on how proceedings ended this afternoon. The prosecution was about to begin testimony this afternoon with a fellow officer of Detective Benjamin Marconi when the defense objected to it. The jury was let out and then sent home after a juror had an emergency. Lawyers from the state and the defense then argued about whether victim impact statements should be allowed. The Supreme Court has said this is the opportunity to humanize Benjamin Marconi now that he's been convicted. But this is also where uh, the prosecutors have requested a charge to be given the jury that they're not to base their decision on any kind of sympathy or anything like that. That's purely what this is. Now, if this testimony is allowed tomorrow, we expect to hear from that fellow officer, family members of Detective Marconi, as well as his SVU supervisor. Court resumes tomorrow at 9 a.m. Erica Hernandez, Case at 12 News. A second man in jail in connection with the robbery back in May when a couple tied up, beaten and robbed at a northeast side motel. San Antonio police had been looking for 38 year old Perry Lyons since May 6th. 
Lyons and Daniel Cheever are accused of bar barging into a room at the Hallmark Inn off I-35 near Rudiman using duct tape and zip ties to restrain a couple inside. They're also accused of beating the couple and stealing items from their safe. One of the victims knew the suspects and gave their names to investigators. Cheever arrested in June. Lyons arrested last night. It is a full return for pre-K 4SA. Later this month, the program will welcome back all 2,000 of its enrolled kids. Last year, pre-K 4SA limited enrollment to 1,000 little ones to be able to spread out kids in classrooms. But the new school year, of course, coincides with the current surge in COVID-19 cases. Tiffany Huertas has a look at their COVID protocols in place and how program leaders say they will be leaning on testing to help keep everyone safe. We are doing extra sanitation in our classrooms and making sure that we clean twice a day. We're encouraging children and employees to wear masks. Sarah Bure, the CEO of Pre-K for SA, says they will also be working with community labs to test staff and children for COVID-19. We're also working with Metro Health, of course, and we have Dr. Reddick is our guiding physician and he we check in with him. And he's at the Children's Hospital and ask him for guidance. When children are dropped off at the center, they will also be conducting health screenings. If a child starts to show illness during the day, the child is taken to our clinic where we have a nurse, a full-time nurse on staff who will assess the child. Children will be isolated until parents can come and pick them up. We help parents get connected to, again, testing to find out, is it COVID? And if so, then we notify the families who may have been um, in close proximity to that child. With school starting on August 16th, Bure wants to remind parents about the importance of early education. There's uh, decades of research that show when children have access to high quality early learning starting at age three and four, they are better prepared for school, but they also do better in college and career. They have better health outcomes. Bure understands parents are worried and that students in this age group can't yet get vaccinated, but says they will open centers safely. It's important to get your children enrolled in early learning because even if there's a pandemic, young children's brains are still developing very rapidly. Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News. New at six, COVID can mimic a lot of different things and pulmonary hypertension might easily be one of them. The symptoms of this disease during the initial stages, such as difficulty breathing and feeling fatigued, are common to the novel coronavirus. Ursula Perry shows us pulmonary hypertension can make life miserable, especially if you don't get a diagnosis. Like the rise in COVID, cases of pulmonary hypertension are rising too. But unlike COVID, a lack of education on the disease is causing some serious concern among medical experts. People often don't get discovered till very late when their hearts are already starting to fail. Young women in their childbearing age or people who have scleroderma, lupus, rheumatoid arthritis or HIV have a higher risk of developing the disease. Do you? And when found in men, it's even more deadly. If you have asthma, COPD or emphysema, or you experience shortness of breath, dizziness, chest pain, swelling in your ankles, legs and abdomen, and a racing pulse, you may want to get screened for pulmonary hypertension right away. 20 years ago, there was no treatment uh, and people died from this disease. Now we have over 20 drugs to treat this disease. Spotting this disease early on is crucial to getting the help you need and better diagnostic techniques are helping to do that. Also, because doctors are getting better at diagnosing and treating, the numbers of those who are getting better are rising. Ursula Perry, KSAT 12 News. If you are still on the fence about getting the vaccine, you have a couple of questions you'd like answered, tune in tomorrow for our KSAD Community Phone Bank. Pediatric infectious disease doctor Tess Barton from University Health will be here to answer questions about getting that shot. The announcement of the number to call coming tomorrow morning on air and online. The phone bank is from 5 until 7 tomorrow night. If back to school shopping is still on your to do list, expect to spend more record spending is what the National Retail Federation is saying. On average, a family with kids in kinder through 12th will spend $849. Consumer advocates say there will be sales, but discounts just won't be as deep this year and prices on just about everything are up. That includes laptops and tablets. Supplies have been pinched by the global microchip shortage.
You might not be able to find the exact model that you want in the exact price that you want. We're not seeing the savings that are, we're not seeing quite as good of savings as we have before. Now, there are still some ways to save. Experts say make a list and a budget. Ask about student discounts on technology. Delay some purchases until after school starts when stores clear their shelves. You can buy in bulk and split with friends and mark your calendar this weekend. Friday through Sunday, you pay no sales tax on most shoes, clothing and basic school supplies. All right, a rainy July. Never thought I'd say that. Giving way to at least the rainy start of an August. Are we in a pattern of rain still, Adam Kasky? You know we are, and it, we're boosting the rain chances a little bit for later on this week even. We've upped them just a little bit for Thursday in particular, and the rain, uh, it's really helping the aquifer respond. It's up nearly half a foot today, and we're about eight feet above the August average. We are fortunate to be in that situation. As for the pollen count, with all the rain and that moisture out there, it's very high. Jumped even more today, up to 17,000. So the aquifer got a boost, but one of the side effects is very high mold. So tonight we do have a space station flyover to talk about. I'll let you know when and where you can see that. Thursday, the highest rain chances this week and into the weekend. Sunny, seasonable, good pool weather. We'll see you in a few minutes. Hey, thank you, Adam. News around Texas now and today marks the second anniversary of the mass shooting at an El Paso Walmart that left 23 people dead. According to prosecutors, they say Patrick Cruzius traveled to far west Texas intending to kill immigrants and Mexicans. His attorneys say he suffers from mental disabilities and was in a psychotic state when he carried out the shooting rampage. He is facing 90 federal charges in the incident, including capital murder and hate crime charges. A hearing to reschedule the trial was supposed to happen today. It's actually pushed back to November due to a backlog of cases caused by the pandemic. We have all been living with the realities of COVID-19 for more than a year now. And if you feel tired of the anxiety and the stress brought on by all of this, you're far from alone. Mental health during this pandemic is the topic of tonight's Case That Explains live stream. We're talking about the effect of the pandemic what it's done to all of our mental well-being and the risk of not handling that stress in a healthy way. You can stream the show tonight right after this newscast on KSAT.com, the KSAT TV app and the KSAT 12 Facebook page. You'll hear from the daughter of Carla Lynn Boyd, a passionate math teacher who sadly was murdered last month. Her family keeping her memory alive as the woman who loved her family and loved her students. We had some major delays on I-35 earlier today after some emergency maintenance work south of downtown. Our Samuel King here with a look at how things look right now. Samuel. Things have improved, Stephen Myra, on 35 at downtown. This is 35 at Flores right now on Transcod as we head over here to uh, the traffic wall and you can see there's some traffic there uh, in those lanes, especially on the upper levels. So let's take a look at that. So the southbound lane still seeing some red there and things uh, come together downtown, but definitely better than it was. Taking a look at some travel times, though, we do have some issues northbound on 35 near Ben's Engelman. So that's going to take you 28 minutes to get from downtown to Loop 410 right now on 35. 13 minutes the other direction. That's also a little higher than normal, but that gives you an idea of that delay if you're heading outbound. South side of town on 35, things looking a lot better. 10 minutes between 410 on the southwest side and downtown there. Also still watching situation on the west side. This is getting a little bit better, but you're still watching this uh, loop 410 just south of Highway 90. Southbound traffic still down to 31 miles per hour there at Valley High, so watch out for that. Also here on the south side, Palo Alto, Road northbound at Loop 410. We're seeing a major slowdown there. You're down to seven miles per hour at Loop 410. So watch out for that uh, this evening as well. Let's take a look one more time. This is a 35 at floor, as you can see uh, the traffic there. I think we have time to check one more trans guide here. Uh, this is Loop 410 at San Pedro. We have a crash that just came in. You can see them putting uh, the cones out there. This is heading westbound on Loop 410 there, so watch out for that as well. If you're about to head out this evening or know someone who is, they might be a little delayed because of that near the airport, guys. Good to see that emergency crew out there putting out the pile, the barricades mm -hmm. and the pylons to let people know what's happening. Yeah, absolutely. This is the Hot Wells Conservancy. It is the remnants 
that are being very carefully taken care of of the hot spot. springs resort down there yeah it's nice to see it from above right kind of gives you the full scale of the layout there yeah and if you ride your bike on the mission mm -hmm. reach you can actually get off and ride up here and take a look at the what's left of the resort but uh, it really is a great interesting remnant of san antonio's yeah. past a neat piece of history there i almost thought about uh, complaining about the present today, saying it was so hot outside, but then I stopped myself. <laughs> and realized it's and August? I said, uh, it is August, yeah. so, you know, rein it in, Myra. Right, it's all relative, isn't it? And, you know, our bodies adjust to various conditions. If this was a uh, more typical summer, then we'd be thinking, hey, low 90s today? Not bad at all. And I do want to point out really quickly the space station flyover that we have this evening. Set your alarm. It starts at 9.42 p.m. It lasts four minutes, so this is a short one, 9.42 p.m. Max height about 59 degrees. It'll appear in the northwest horizon and then dis disappear off to the east. All right, that's our space station flyover. Some folks will have a little too much cloud cover. Take a look at the visible satellite imagery, especially south of San Antonio. We have some lingering high clouds that were left over from the tops of thunderstorms earlier today. Locally, we're looking OK. It's just if those cirrus clouds from those thunderstorms keep creeping their way upward, it's going to impede our viewing of the space station flyover at 942 PM. They're dissipating a bit and it's starting to arc off to the east, but especially south of San Antonio, you'll still have some of those clouds tonight. Hill Country looks good. You just have those fair weather cumulus clouds that are generally dissipating and you look at the radar and some of the clouds have been developing a few thunderstorms throughout the day today, especially southeast of San Antonio this morning and then midday it was south of town right now in the past two hours. Not a lot of activity to talk about, just some hit or miss isolated downpours now between Schulenburg and Hallettsville in Lavaca County near Highway 77 there. These are brief, but it wouldn't surprise me if Hallettsville got a quick splash. Just north of Gonzales, we have another downpour to talk about. And then you head south of town right along I-37. A few just popped up near Campbellton. Otherwise, not a whole lot out there. A little bit of lightning and thunder uh, down south of Beeville. In the hill country, A-OK. -okay, just mostly sunny with a few patchy clouds. So here's the big picture, and it's no surprise that most of the rain that developed today is just south and east of San Antonio. That's where our stalled boundary is. And anytime you have a boundary, even a weak one, a little wind shift line, it, it can really help you generate the lift that you need to basically take advantage of the instability in the atmosphere and kickstart a few thunderstorms. So that's going to linger for a few more days, but we'll get more upper level support by Thursday. So let's go through time here tomorrow. A mixture of sun and clouds, a few hit or miss pop up showers and storms in the afternoon. This is one o'clock here. Don't pay close attention to the exact location of those pop up showers. We get into Thursday morning, we'll have a decent amount of cloud cover, maybe a hit or miss shower. But by Thursday afternoon, notice how the the computer is painting more numerous showers. Still not everybody's going to get them, but just more out there because we'll have a little extra support. So that's why by Thursday we're going up to 40% for those rain chances. So scattered in nature. Right now we're at 92 degrees. Dew point is 68. We had a high temperature of 93 today and the average is 97. You look at 92 in San Antonio. That's the same as North Platte, Nebraska and Bismarck, North Dakota. Actually, they're up in a they're in a drought throughout the Dakotas and Minnesota, so not good for their farmers this season. Around here, we've been fortunate and that wetter, rainier pattern has kept temperatures down two and a half degrees below average in July. Right now you look at the map across the state, low nine. You're not even seeing triple digits on the map. And now is climatologically the warmest time of year for us in terms of our average temperature. 91 Hondo, 89 Kerrville, 89 in Gonzales. Not bad for this time of year. 75 in the morning tomorrow. Low 90s again for the high temperature. We'll give it a 30% chance of a pop up shower or two. And for the most part, we'll be in the low to mid 90s, mid 90s closer to the Rio Grande. This weekend, all of us mid 90s, nothing but sunshine. We're not expecting any rain chances Saturday and Sunday. So it looks like Myra's going to have to rain it in <laughs> for a few more days. Agreed. Yeah. Her I'm, August angst. I'm, I'm told that so often. Rain it in. Not by me.
No. Say let me. it go. It's, it's me telling Just you. Let that. it go. All right, let's go to weather right now. And the free agency, a lot of free agents on the move. Well, we told you about, of course, Patty Mills signing away from the Spurs as well as DeMar DeRozan. It looks like he's going to be traded to the Chicago Bulls. They're not the only ones leading. So is Rudy Gay. He's headed for one of the Western Conference competitors that does give the Spurs some problems. We'll let you know more about that when we come back. Also about DeMar DeRozan as well. And Dak is not back yet. Coming up. Longer spur. That's after the 34-year-old veteran agreed a two-year, $12 million contract with the Utah Jazz. The move reunites him with his former Memphis teammate Mike Conley Jr. in four years with the Spurs. Rudy averaged 11 and a half points, shot 38% for three-point range. The second year of his contract, his option, as we told you, first at five, free agent Patty Mills is leaving the Spurs for Brooklyn Nets, agreeing to a two-year, $12 million deal. A sad day for Spurs fans in our community. And as we also told you, first at at five today, DeMar DeRozan is gone, but not for nothing. According to The Athletic, the Spurs are working on finalizing a sign-and-trade deal with Chicago for Thad Young, Al Farouk Aminu, a first-round and two second-round picks. In return, DeRozan would sign a three-year $85 million deal. Camping with KZAP, powered by Davis Law Firm. Dak Prescott did not throw today at practice, will not play in the Hall of Fame game in Canton on Thursday. That's according to head coach Mike McCarthy. He says the earliest the Cowboys star quarterback could return to throwing the ball is August the 10th, which is a week from today. That goes along with the original timeline reported by the Dallas Morning News of two weeks when the face of the franchise suffered a strained muscle and a throwing shoulder last Wednesday in camp. Anthony Brown is fighting for a starting job with cornerback in the Dallas Cowboys training camp. It's after the Cowboys drafted Kelvin Joseph out of Kentucky in the second round. Combine that with injuries that have kept Brown out for 13 games over the last two seasons. He has something to prove this season, despite the fact he scored his first ever career touchdown against the Giants last season with a fumble recovery. It's competition regardless. Whoever it is, it's going to be competition. Um, and definitely, we want to help the guys win. Everybody want to win. So I feel like it is what it is. Yeah, I feel, I feel good about where I'm at. You know, um, it's always room for improvement. And I'm always trying to get better. I know I'm not where I'm supposed to be yet, but I definitely feel good about where I'm at and what I've done up to this point. And I'm looking to keep growing and keep building on it. All right, the Cowboys had one practice today. Tomorrow they will travel to Canton to face the Steelers in the Hall of Fame game. That will be on Thursday. High school football workouts have begun in the state of Texas and right here in the San Antonio area for some schools despite some rough weather at the start. As a result, we begin our big game previews today. The look at the Marion Bulldogs. The Bulldogs returned 15 starters for head coach Ryan Miller, eight on offense, seven on defense, off a team that went three and three in district, 14, three, eight in division one, and made the playoffs, making it to by district. The Bulldogs will be led by a great senior class, starting with Tanner Beakley, who is back. They're throwing for almost 1,800 yards and 17 touchdowns and rushing for another 492 yards and 12 TDs. Yeah, no, this is, you know, we've got a great senior class this year. We're excited to hit the ground running this morning, obviously handle a little adversity with the weather and everything. But we've got 22 seniors that have uh, been in our program for four years now. And like I said, they're excited and the coaches are excited. And uh, we've got a great underclassman uh, class coming up. And uh, like I said, we're ready to hit the ground running. Jordan's always one. Randolph, we always got to worry about them guys. But I think that the amount of seniors we got and the amount of like leadership we have will definitely come on top. How fun is this season going to be for you being a senior? Should be great. You know, you have a lot of underclassmen. You know, it's going to be fun to teach them up and show them, you know, different ways of how to, you know, handle themselves, handle adversity, and just push them to their personal best. The Bulldogs will kick off their season on the road against Hyde Park in Austin on Friday, August the 27th at 7 p.m. The entire season, by the way, kicks off on August the 26th, which is on a Thursday, and it's not that far away. It is not. <laughs> when you said football practice yeah. had already begun, I was like, uh, yeah, we're I guess ready it's for that it. Time. We're already ramped up and ready for it. Yeah, I had to rein it in. Oh, did you? We were talking about. When have that. you ever known him to I rein it in? Doesn't I'm happen. learning from Myra. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is all hilarious. Our case that Q&A is up next. We continue to see the number of cases and the number of hospitalizations rise in our community. We are talking about the latest COVID numbers. We are joined by San Antonio Mayor Ron Nuremberg right now. Uh, Mr. Mayor, your reaction to the numbers? I mean, we are seeing it, uh, incremental increases just every day, it seems like, in hospitalizations and cases. What can you do at this point? 
Well, you know, we've talked to all of our legal experts and, you know, with the governor's order now, he's just about blocked every door that we had to walk through in terms of being able to use local mitigation measures outside of appealing to people to do the right thing, which is, number one, go get vaccinated if you're eligible, and two, wear a mask while there's widespread transmission of COVID, the Delta variant happening because it proliferates so quickly. Um, so we are really working diligently to get that message out and to help people understand that the vaccine will prevent you from dying. The vaccine will prevent you from getting severely ill. It does, it, so it doesn't necessarily stop transmission and that's what we're seeing. But if you want to prevent death, which is the purpose of our pandemic response efforts, then get vaccinated. And while, while widespread transmission is happening, we've got to slow it down by wearing a mask. I want to share with you something, uh, Steve and Myra, that I, I just talked to one of our hospital CEOs and they had roughly 250 people in the hospital um, today with COVID, uh, COVID positive patients, about 250, 92% of them were unvaccinated. So there were some breakthrough, breakthrough cases in the hospital, but let me give you something that's stark. Nobody was, in, uh, was on ventilators. They had a single person out of 65 that was in I ICU, but it was a step down unit, so it was not as severe a case. So of the 250 people that were in the, back, uh, that were in the hospital, no one was on ICU and no one was on a ventilator. That gives you a picture of what the vaccine does. It's effective in preventing death. It's prevent effective in preventing severe illness. If you value your life and the life of those around you, get vaccinated. And we know we saw the number of people on ventilators certainly climb during the last surge uh, at the end of the year. All this happening, Mayor, as kids prepare to go back to school. And I can tell you we are getting question after question from parents wondering what individual school districts are going to be able to do to keep kids safe. Uh, of course, you talked about the governor's mandate not allowing districts to put in place a mask mandate. Have you been speaking with any leaders of local school districts to ask them what their big concerns are right now ahead of the start of the school or what they want to see happen? Yes, and we, we convened with all of our superintendents late last week with our, uh, with our Metro Health leaders, our public health officials, and we heard their concerns. And, and the concerns are that they have really little control given the governor's order about requiring these basic mitigation measures. And if you look at the CDC recommendation, the CDC guideline says if you are a child go back, going back to school, you should go back in a mask. So we we're asking them to do that. Uh, the public health authority uh, here in Bear County uh, issued that advisory uh, that if you're going back to school, you should wear a mask. The governor in a most cruel uh, order has prevented our local school districts from, from requiring that. But we we're asking people to do the right thing Wear a mask if you're going back to school and certainly uh, the family members of those around uh, and everyone else in the community that's eligible, go get a vaccine. That will help us to keep our kids safe. You know, the president even talked today about certain states that are that are preventing some of these mitigation efforts like mask mandates and some of the other things, expressing his frustration with the entire thing. When we move forward here, I know that you and the county judge both wrote a letter to Governor Abbott asking him to give you the power and school districts the power to have masking take place. Did you ever hear anything back from the governor? Well, we saw some tweets, which is really it. Uh, and, and that's, again, unfortunate because it doesn't seem like the governor grasps the seriousness of the issue that we're facing. Uh, and, the, and, the, and the very stark choices that parents and teachers and administrators are having to make. Uh, so we are appealing. People do have the choice to do the right thing. Uh, but we also need to make sure that everybody is, is around them is as well. And again, all of this is about the, the vaccinations. Um, if you are vaccinated, you are safe from severe illness and death. And the problem is there are still many people in our community who are not eligible to receive the vaccine, which is namely children under 12. And so if we value, we should be doing what we can to protect them. 
And so that means getting vaccinated if you're eligible. And then, of course, to slow down the transmission around them, wear a mask. We have also been hearing uh, from, you know, other cities and counties around the country, companies as well, who are starting to require their employees get vaccinated. That is a condition of employment in some places now. I know that uh, the city of San Antonio is looking at the legalities behind that. So where are you in that effort, the idea of potentially requiring all city of San Antonio employees to be vaccinated? Again, that is something that we are looking at legally. Of course, uh, there's a lot of discussion about that happening across the country. Um, and a lot of that hinges on uh, the author full authorization uh, likely to take place sometime between uh, September and January. Uh, but we, ha we do want to point out that businesses have the right to operate as they wish. And if they wish to require their employees to get vaccinated or even their customers to walk in, uh, requiring vaccines. They can do that. We've already heard from a couple of businesses here in town that are going to be uh, that have begun requiring vaccination for their employees. We applaud that effort. That is a uh, way to keep their own employees and their customers safe. Um, again, we cannot stress. And, and if you go into our local hospitals, you will see how much stress they are under, not just the health care providers, those doctors and nurses who have been stressed beyond belief for the last 18 months, but also the capacity restraints that we're under. And, and again, it's not just about COVID when we're talking about hospital capacity. It's about everything that they do in there. So if you're uh, trauma runs, car accidents, pregnancies, all the things that hospitals serve our community every single day for are under intense pressure because of the sharp rise in Delta variant COVID cases that they're seeing inside the hospital. We can help prevent that. We can help slow that down, again, by wearing masks. And then, of course, the ultimate tool against this pandemic, get vaccinated. Yeah, we talked to an emergency room doctor last night, Mr. Mayor, who basically said the same thing. We know what the solution is to this, that masking and social distancing will help, but the solution is getting vaccinated. So he shared some of those frustrations last night as well. Mayor Ron Nuremberg, always appreciate your time. Great to see you all. Be careful. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everybody. Still watching the situation near the airport. They're moving the camera on us there. Loop 410 at uh, San Pedro, getting a different view of the situation uh, there. Uh, we had a crash there earlier, and you can see a couple of uh, other uh, vehicles there, too. So uh, we'll get another look at what's going on at this point. Looks like that's a stalled vehicle there. So something separate than what we saw a little bit earlier. But here's how it looks on the map. Uh, 410, 12 miles per hour there at the 281 interchange at Loop 410. So some delays near the airport. If you need to head over there to pick someone up this evening, know there's been a lot of delays at the airport for computer glitches with a couple of the airlines, but watch out for the traffic as well. Seven minutes between 35 and 281, and then another seven minutes between 281 and I-10. So definitely a slowdown there. Again, looking downtown 410 at San Pedro, not downtown, actually near the airport. Also seeing this is downtown. So we are seeing some delays again here on 35. This is the view uh, from Flores. So watch out for that if you're downtown as well this evening, guys. Thank you, Samuel. Look outside with live cam, some big clouds out there, but uh, as much rain as we've seen lately, any more headed our way, Adam. Yeah, we increased the chances a little bit in a couple of days, and I'll even have some stats for you in terms of rainfall and precipitation overall. Uh, this summer and so far this year. As we go through the evening hours, just a few isolated downpours out there, generally south and east of San Antonio. We'll take a close look at those in just a minute and talk about the rest of the week coming right up. Apparently, Steve has gotten a big kick out of me saying I'm raining in my complaints <laughs> about this August heat. I do, and you know, there's also a little bit of a pun there. Rain, is. heat, yes, August. I'm yeah, I'm connecting the dots. So I just okay. yeah. yeah, I am I am enjoying that. Myra's raining in. Mm -hmm. Myra, quick question. For August disappointment. Uh, you by happen? Do you need an exterminator near your desk by chance? <laughs> I need to discuss something with you uh, after the show. 
the creepy crawler that was underneath this tablet. But let me tell you something. My house is full of fake plastic <laughs> bugs so she, I didn't get that are toys. Good. So I am well versed. I saw her find real... it and she just was like, yeah, OK, it's fake. <laughs> I need a better target. who did this. I, I, I should have walked over to your desk and said, please put your toys away. Yeah, Thank you very much. <laughs> I was more surprised that you weren't her first choice to who planted the fake bug. Yeah, that was Adam, that, that was, was a, that was the upset of the a day. A misstep on my part. I should have known. I'm kind of offended to be honest. <laughs> I thought you right away you're coming at me. Oh, I tried. I tried. We try to get people around here periodically. It's worth the effort. <laughs> worth the effort. Valiant Sp effort. Yeah, I tried. They're, I got to find a better target. Spotty showers are possible. <laughs> <laughs> I should have known. You'd just be like, okay, I can handle this. Yeah, I have boys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Spotty exactly. showers possible this evening. We have some out there. Sunny and seasonable this weekend. Space Station flyover, 9.42 p.m. Set your alarm, 9.42 p.m. It's only going to last four minutes. Starts off in the northwest. Ends in the eastern sky. All right, that's what we're looking at. Let's get right to it here. Take a look at a beautiful shot from yesterday evening. Isn't this awesome? This is just north of town. Uh, double rainbows yesterday around sunset. Smithson Valley Road and FM 1863. So far north there. But beautiful, beautiful sky. I love sharing nature's beauty with you. Here's a look at our rainfall since June 1, which is the start of meteorological summer, over 7 inches, and we're 1.37 inches above average. Year to date, over 22 inches of precipitation, and that's nearly four inches above average. So we're doing well, doing well in terms of the uh, rain and lack of drought and good maintenance rain out there. I want to look at these showers again closely. And you go east of town, we have a few pop up downpours here and there, approaching Hallettsville, one downpour, and even from Schulenburg to Hallettsville along 77, smack dab downtown Gonzales. Right there, we've got the downpour pushing southward. This is fairly short lived. Nonetheless, could drop a quick half an inch in that location. South of town, a little bit of widely separated activity, and it's no surprise that this is actually occurring right along the stalled frontal boundary that's south of San Antonio. That acts as the focal point and basically the triggering mechanism for some showers and storms. Once we get into Thursday, tomorrow's going to be more of the same. By Thursday, we'll have a little more upper level support. Two little upper level disturbances will come toward us, and that's going to boost our rain chances up to 40% for Thursday. So a little more numerous in nature on Thursday, and that's the peak this week. Right now we're at 92, dew point is 68. We're feeling the mugginess out there, of course. Temperature wise, it's going to be a typical evening. 91 now in Hondo and New Braunfels, 87 in Kerrville. For the most part, we're near 90 degrees. And over the coming hours, we'll gradually fall through the 80s. And then by tomorrow morning, we'll start the day in the mid 70s. So fairly seasonable 75 in the morning. By the afternoon, still a few degrees below average, as has been the trend in the afternoons, that 30% chance. And then once we get into the weekend, we'll be close to our average high at 96 degrees. Fake bugs, always good fun in the office. <laughs> they never get old, really. Well, never. I got plenty more if yeah. you like any. In case you missed it, coming up next. Here's today's in case you missed it. From one year after a convenience store clerk was shot and killed in Garden Ridge, her killer still has not been found. The Garden Ridge Police Department still needs some help solving the murder of 40 year old Pollyanna Smotherman. Today they released this surveillance video from the night of her murder. So right now children younger than 12 are unable to get vaccinated. That could change. Trials are underway, including one Pfizer trial at Driscoll Children's Hospital in Corpus Christi. Dr. Jaime Fergie, the hospital's director of infectious disease, tells us trial participants are being pulled from all over South Texas, including the San Antonio and Austin areas. In other news, two people dead after a burst of violence outside of the Pentagon. It happened this afternoon at a transit station outside of the building. A Pentagon officer stabbed at the bus platform. The suspect shot and killed, meantime, by law enforcement. The Pentagon was locked down for more than an hour, and the motive is unclear. Today marks two years since a gunman killed 23 people at a Walmart in El Paso. Prosecutors say Patrick Cruzius traveled to the store with the intent of, as he put it, killing Mexicans. He is currently facing 90 federal charges, including capital murder and hate crime charges. It started last month 
University Hospital reported treating up to three pregnant women at a time with COVID-19, especially in the past week, as the Delta variant takes hold in Bear County. Whereas back in May and June, we maybe had one a month. Uh, so we've seen a huge rise in the number of uh, pregnant cases we're seeing. Before we go, we have some time for some late breaking news out of Austin. A federal judge blocking Texas Governor Greg Abbott and the state of Texas from ordering state troopers to pull over drivers transporting migrants who, quote, pose a risk of carrying COVID-19, end quote. That's coming from the Texas Tribune and the Dallas Morning News reporting that late tonight. This comes just a few days after the U.S. Attorney General threatened to take legal action if Abbott did not rescind that order, calling it dangerous and unlawful. No comment yet from the governor on this temporary restraining order. Still watching the situation on Loop 410 at San Pedro. You see a vehicle there has crashed into uh, the, the wall there, so they're still working to clean that up. Right. At least one lane closed there, Adam. All right, Samuel, temperatures tomorrow, low to mid 90s, mid 90s, closer to the Rio Grande, low 90s elsewhere, even upper 80s in spots. Timberwood Park about 89, 92. Meanwhile, Lake Hills for a high tomorrow afternoon. This weekend, sunny, hot and humid, a few showers until then. Rain in those complaints. Yeah, I was going to ask you how you felt about that forecast.